I'm the only one who doesn't get a cake at the birthday dinner. You are a demon, not my family. You are a malevolent entity that needs to be driven out of her house immediately. We should throw holy water at her and recite Saint Michael's prayer. Let's drive the demon disguised as a daughter-in-law and bring peace into our home. What the? Wait a minute. You've got to be kidding me. My mother-in-law grabs the bottle of holy water with great enthusiasm and turns to face me. Her eyes are blazing, and uh, it's as if she's possessed by a demon. I'm sure she's unaware of her own ugliness. Sean, Jessam, help me. The cry for help is ignored. The father-in-law and my husband silently clutched a rosary. Oh no, do you all hag me that much? I've endured the daily billing of my mother-in-law and have done my best with the housework. Today is September 29th, so it's a perfect opportunity to do this. You should be thankful that Ali the demon live among us for a little while. She raises her arm in the air, and I squeeze my eyes shut involuntarily. Hey, what are you guys doing? I open my eyes slightly to see the cause of her panic. I see everyone's looking at her, and... The story goes back some time ago. I don't mean to brag, but my husband Jason and I are so in love with each other. He is a gentleman, although he is a little too serious. He understands that I tend to get absorbed in my work and takes very good care of me. He's a really good companion. We got married a few years ago, and finally bought a house at the end of last year. It's a bit of a headache though, when I think about the mortgage, but I'm happy because I felt like we have really become a family. My relationship with my father-in-law Sean is excellent. Like Jason, he's serious and a bit careless. He's now retired, but when he was a business person, he was admired by many of his colleagues. His hobby is traveling, and he often sends us fresh produce from the countryside. He often compliments that Jason is lucky to be married to me. I feel tickled every time he does. The problem is... Hello Jason, it's your birthday coming up, and I'm coming to your house to celebrate. Mom, you don't have to come over for every event. We just saw each other last week, remember? What are you talking about? We are a family, we should be together all the time. I suppose Ari won't feed us well, will she? I groan at her high-pitched voice leaking out of the phone. The only problem in my happy marriage is my mother-in-law, Megan. I've been subjected to criticism and harassment like this from the very beginning, and it's gotten worse over years. She barged into my house and announced, says that it's not tidy enough, and starts cleaning on her own. When she calls my name in her piercing voice, I begin to brace myself. Jason says that she's had a very peculiar personality since he was a child. She used to be a tiger mom, locking him up in his room and making him study. She was also a very economical person, or rather a cheapskate. She was so stingy that she hardly bought him toys. In the past, she was so frugal that she did not celebrate any holidays and events. When Jason mentioned to his friends that his family didn't particularly celebrate Christmas, is spread in the neighborhood. After that, she became morbidly obsessed with any events. When I asked him how she came to be like that, she answered with disgust. She has relatives who are well off, and they are all highly educated. She's jealous of them. Huh? Is that the only reason? It's ludicrous, isn't it?
I think she sees you as an enemy because she has a complex about her low education. I did graduate from an academically well-known university. That was the result of my efforts. I worked my butt off to get accepted there. I don't deserve to be resented for that. There's no way I can tell her this straight out though. If my relationship with her deteriorates, Sean will be affected too. Jason would not feel good about it either. I'm sorry that she has been hard on you. No, it's not your fault. Even though she is a strange person, I only see her a few times a year. I thought it was bearable until recently. She has been making direct remarks to me more frequently than before. It's become difficult for me to smile and shrug it off, and I've been avoiding her as much as possible. However, it is not uncommon for mishaps to occur. Do I have to deal with this person for the rest of my life? I wait patiently for the call to finish. A week before the birthday dinner is planned, I decide to speak to Sean. I know that Megan will complain no matter what, but I want to at least be prepared. I don't even know what time they plan to come over. After a few rings, I hear his voice come through. Hello Sean, this is Erin. Oh, Erin. His voice gives me an uneasy feeling. It sounds less energetic than usual. Normally, he excitedly tells me about his recent travels or about his hobby of collecting antiques. My hand holding the phone tightens as I wonder if something is wrong. What's wrong? You sound to be in low spirits. Well, you know. He says that some of the antiques in his collection have gone missing. It's only recently that the numbers start decreasing. Some of them he has treasured for decades are gone. Thinking it might be a thief, he consulted Megan, but she brushed him off as his imagination and didn't take him seriously. He explained sorrowfully that his memory has deteriorated since his retirement and he isn't confident to report to the police. I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with you. Don't be, thank you for confiding in me. No matter how much his memory is failing, I don't believe that he would misunderstand such an important thing. There must be something going on. I get a hunch, so I tell Jason about it as soon as he gets home. After listening to my full story, he gasps remembering something. Come to think of it, my mom's been sending me pictures of designer brand bags these days. Hmm? When I dropped her off at the doctor's office the other day, she was wearing two fancy looking shoes for the occasion. She said her friend gave them to her, but... He stops changing from his suit and looks up at the ceiling thinking about something. A few days later, what he's been thinking becomes clear. Ah, uh, he's so right. As I wrap up Jason's supper, I look at the clock and see that it's already 9 p.m. He's gone to his parents' house in the morning and has not returned yet. I've sent him texts, but he hasn't even read them. I'm worried that something's wrong, so I'm about to call him. Then I hear the front door open. I rush to the front and find an exhausted looking Jason standing there. He says he hasn't had dinner so I reheat the food and put it on the table for him. After taking a bite, he finally looks relaxed. I'm sorry I hadn't been able to call you. That's fine, but what happened? It's probably mom who stole dad's antiques. No way, how can that be? I have proof. She was out with friends so I snipped around today. He shows me the screen of his phone. What I see is a closet full of clothes. 
They are several pieces of clothing from well-known brands. He slides his finger across the screen to a picture of a bank statement. I see Sean's name as an account holder. Is this the only balance he had? Yup. Apparently, my mom spent the money. When I told my dad, he wasn't surprised. They've already experienced something similar before. Jason's toys, gifted by his dad and relatives, kept disappearing. It used to happen so often, but when he asked his mom, she kept denying it. Instead of helping him find them, she told him, If you have time to play with your toys, you should study. Get into a good school and let your mother enjoy the luxury of life. She kept rebuking these things to him. He listened to her at first. She told him to study, but she did not allow him to get a tutor or buy him reference books. Her attitude was so contradictory that he began to distrust her. By the time he was in high school, he had become indifferent to her comments. So, I talked it over with Dad. He told me in a low voice about the plan he had. Jason's birthday has arrived. Madden comes over wearing a flash shipping dress. I can tell that it's a designer's brand from the logos all over it. Sadly, it doesn't suit her at all. I look away in shame, but she doesn't notice at all and comes into the house as if it was her own. Sean apologetically grunts at me. She mentioned that she would bring the food for us today. So, I prepared only the bare minimum. Some snacks and drinks. She begins putting out the items she bought one after another as soon as she enters the living room. They all seem to come from the gourmet deli, and the sanas and orders look all very fancy. It only makes me feel disgusted after hearing Jason's story. I can't help but think that her dress and all of these foods are bought with Sean's money. When the table is about to be filled with a lot of food, she excitedly sets a box of cakes. Jason is puzzled when he sees it. What? Only three pieces? Well, I don't eat a lot of sweets. Erin, can you cut them into small pieces? Sure. What are you talking about? They are from a famous patisserie. It was hard to get them. Anyway, there are only three people in the family. Madden deliberately puts her hands on her chin and lowers the tone of her voice. Erin is not a family member. She is a demon. Demons don't eat cakes. She puts a smirk on her face. I'm so taken aback that I can't say anything back. I've known that she's an outrageous person, but I never thought she'd call me a demon. I glare at her, but she seems nonchalant. She waves her hand to me as if she's trying to get rid of an insect. Then, she grabs something from her bag. It's a small bottle of clear liquid. I have an idea. Let's throw holy water at her. Let's drive a demon disguised as a daughter-in-law and bring peace back into this family. She opens the lid with great enthusiasm and turns to face me. Her eyes are blazing, and she looks like a demon herself. I'm sure she's unaware of her own ugliness. She looks at Joan and Jason, and shouts for their agreement. Today is September 29th, the birthday of St. Michael, the Archangel. So, it's a perfect opportunity to do this. You should be thankful that I let a demon live among us for a little while. Hearing her shriek, I clench my fist tightly. If she goes this far, I can't remain silent. Just as I'm about to stand up, Jason restrains me with his hand. He gives a sign to Sean, and the two of them stand up at once. 
Mega looks up at them with her mouth agape. That's enough, Mom. We know what you've been doing. What do you mean? You stole Dad's antiques, didn't you? I've no idea what you're talking about. It's not just his stuff. You had taken my video games, and birthday money before, and use it to buy some meaningless brand name crap. What do you mean by meaningless? You're the one who was spending it on crap, and I'm the one who's. She shuts her mouth abruptly when she realizes that she said the wrong thing. From there, Jason's verbal attacks commence. He had been in dire straits as a child with no free time and no allowance. She is always concerned about how she look in the eyes of the world, and he hates being complained about all the time. He's also being annoyed by her coming over for every event. When he's finished, Sean takes over and continues. No matter how much money I made, you always complained that I was wasting it, or that we would be poor. His voice is so low that it's unimaginable from his usual self. He sounded like a priest trying to control the demon. She hangs her head down in silence and doesn't try to protest. He continues in a stern voice. You never fed us well, yet you've spent all my money. What more do you want to take from me? He snatches the bottle from her hand and throws the liquid at her with all his might. Stop it. You're the one who told us to get rid of the demon. That's right. We drove you from us. Come on, get out. Unclean spirit, infernal invader. She stands up, her face bright red after being splashed by the water. She wobbles to the door and walks out of the house. Half a year later. This looks delicious. Did you make it? Yes, I hope you like it. Bon appetit. We are sitting around the dinner table. After the drama, Sean immediately confronted Erin with a divorce. It's still in process, but so far so good. He's freed from her calamities and is now leading a healthy lifestyle, as if nothing ever happened. Although he couldn't get all of his antiques back, he started collecting them again. As for Jessel and me, we are expecting the new family member. We'll be a much livelier family next year. We are very happy, even though we still have to pay the mortgage, and the financial headaches will never stop. While the three of us are enjoying our meal together, Sean suddenly puts down his cutleries. He looks at me with a serious face, and I straighten my posture. Erin, Jason, I'm sorry to bring shame on our family. But I must tell you something. What is it? It seems that Megan has been stealing from our relatives. I'm astounded, but keep quiet and wait for him to continue. After the divorce, Megan became penniless and asked her relatives for help. However, she's had a history of stealing their belongings, and they've already distrusted her. She has been working part-time jobs, but hasn't been able to hold them for a long time. Her pride must get in the way, which causes problems with her co-workers. Sean says that much and hangs his head down. If she ever comes here, you can send her away immediately. I'm sorry for scaring you when you're expecting. Please, Sean. Thanks to you, we got rid of her. Indeed, we've driven all the bad spirits with holy water, so it's alright. Jason's half-joke half-truth seems to relax him, and he looks up with a smile. Jason took a glass of beer and pointed it at my stomach. A toast to my dad's new chapter and our baby. Cheers! Thank you Jason and Erin. 
No brand name clothes and no delicacies from Gourmet Deli. Still, our table is filled with a lot of blessings.